and justice for all. Okay, board members present. Um, well, since you're both alternates, is it your, you tonight, Mike? Is it your turn tonight? Yeah, Sean was last yeah. time. But okay, I, and actually, I David's kind of not here either. David, has, no, David has resigned or no? Okay, so both of you will be uh, regular voting members tonight. So, Sean Winston, uh, we've got Niall Shore, we've got the vice chair, Paul, Paul Bevere, absent is Nicole Fecto, and Mike LaRue. We also have our planning technician here, James. Um, there is no public comment, or there's no public here tonight, so we will not be having a public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the July 19th, 2018 meeting. Do we have a couple of minutes? Yes. For you? Of course. Well, I, I did find one thing wrong on the first page, but I'm, keep, I'm looking more as I get further here. Mm, I see it too. Go. Same when you have on the first page, I think uh, as presented should be as amended. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have a question when the Patrick. Motion to accept the minutes as amended. Mm -hmm. But that's not a motion you're making, though. Right. You just, okay. Uh, the very last page, the. Uh, I guess it's next to the last page. Um, when Patrick Venn was our uh, planning board person, um, he said your minutes should only reflect what actually happened. And this here, it, it says maybe at the end after the minutes, it could say that James Bellismo thought that, you know, that August 15th was a good date, but the date that was suggested was not. It looks like it's actually, I know they're right, italicized, but it looks like it's part of the minutes. So it's not clear. We can make it up. It's technical. We could, yeah, we could well, strike you, that. You could just put the word in note or something. Yeah. And, and, no. and just leave it yeah. as is, you know, mm -hmm. just so it's not. A yeah, just action. something so we know it's not really, um, it was not part of the proceedings. Okay. Uh, on page three, the second paragraph, the second time you mentioned that name, you spelled it wrong. Is that first name or last name? Last name. Last name. Um, and then under mobile homes, the first sentence, I think you need to change it from the problem with multiple homes to the problem was multiple homes on a single lot. You know what I'm talking about here? Yeah. Okay, good. Anybody else? Mine 
Okay, so seeing no other corrections or amendments, it would be the motion will be for approval of the minutes as amended. I'll make the oh. I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, minutes of August second as amended. Second. And July nineteenth. You're looking at oh, the I'm sorry. today. You're, you're getting ahead Do of I have to amend my motion? <laughs> Let's make your motion. My, I, I, um, I make a motion that the, we accept the minutes of July 19th uh, as amended. And I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. It's 5 0. All right. That was a tough one. Moving on to land use ordinance amendments. So we had a number of things, if you go back to our, um, our minutes, there was a number of things in here that we asked to have changed. I can, you can move to the um, projector, because I have, I have it all on the projector ready to go. Isn't it this? Yeah, yeah. But but this, is, this is for the public, so the public can follow along with sure. us. And just to show the, the differences between the two, which is what's changed in my mind. <laughs> You want me to pull that down? down. I thought that was Dave's document. That good? So the version on the left is the older amendments, and the one on the right, obviously, are the new ones. So the first page is all the same. We're cool with that. Um, you know, I sent out the email about the licensing and fees. And um, so you can see on the left, All fees shall be paid to the town of Berwick and or the main department of administrative and financial services. That kind of tipped me off a little bit to, we should like look at that a little bit more. And when you go back to main LR 2395, it specifies where the, why the cost, they're supposed to reasonably recover their administrative costs. It doesn't really apply to town of Berwick cost. And as a reference, if you look at um, Sanford's license, they're $100 a year. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were, regardless of tier. Um, <laughs> were these just one, one, these were just one time fees? Yearly fees. Those were these fees. were yearly yeah. fees? Yeah. Yeah. That's just a license fee. Right. And that license fee is what they're going to be paying to the, that other de department. We know what the fees are to the state, what the fee structure is for the state. That, that's that, it. That's the that's state. Okay. Yeah. So that's they're the, paying that to the state. Yeah, already. And like Sanford's um, licensing fee is $100 per year. And I, my suggestion is that I think it's important that we have a license fee, but we probably wait until next spring to kind of flesh out. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Yeah, $100 a year seems like light. And we could also incorporate alcohol as well and also look at other business fees or licenses we want to incorporate. As oh, the and Lee J had talked about sort of a competitive proposal system. We can, I guess, do that at the same time. A right. System, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be a safe discussion. Rather than just a license fee, but right. Only a have lot, people so actually many submit licenses. proposals yeah. and, and limit the number of licenses yeah. based on those proposals. So that 
covers that. I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, instead of mobile homes on individual lots, we now have multiple manufactured homes slash mobile homes on individual lots. It's a conditional use on R1, not allowed in CI. Um, that doesn't restrict mobile homes in CI. I don't know if we wanted to do that even further. That'd be another row. But I guess that covers the discussions that were had at last meeting. Does that look good? Yeah. And then I can get rid of this one. Shouldn't it be animal farms rather than animal farms? It is. So this is the newer newer one. And it's just it's it's animal farms now. Yeah, but it says here animals. Yeah, just get rid of. Oh it. yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. We're good to go. Yes, we'll make a li live change yeah. here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> two, two plurals make a singular. <laughs> and I think that that covers it. Yeah. And then there's just some slight changes to the non-residential buildings on over five thousand square feet. Just. Limited residential. And by the way, I think we need to address this and ask some serious questions. Because if you look at in our land use ordinance, our limited residential, our resource protection, our stream protections are less strict than the underlying zones. If you look at limited residential, the minimum, the minimum lot size is like 40,000 square feet. And the, the, the lot size dimensions are even less. So if it's an R3, you know, and, if, and it's in one of those other shoreland zones, mm -hmm. they're less strict. So you're saying if there is some kind of a limited residential zone with an R3, they can get away with a small lot size instead of a 300 by 300 lot? Yeah. Yeah. You should not listen to sure? look at that. Positive. <coughs> and I don't know the reason. <coughs> you have some the reason. oversight. It seems it seems like so if you look look do in we have any limited residential within we do. Yeah, I I need to get the um Sherland zone map in here. But but Sherland zone which is like a limited residential that would preclude the, the strictest would be uh, uh, the take over what would happen. Is it the strictest or is it or is it no, it says it, is. it applies. Putting, yeah. It apply. My understanding is that it applies to whatever's in most. So if the lots more than fifty percent of a certain zone, it follows that zone. Maybe um. Maybe if you find the more strict part, because maybe that I vaguely can remember that statement, but. but anyways, if you look at the. The table, the lot size is less. But that's, I think that's for another day. And then the odor's good, so that's that's that. Um, Dave, are you st still good to do the presentation to the selectmen? Tuesday? Yep. 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 And then we'll have, I know it's a little weird, but we'll do the public hearing afterwards, and they're all cool with that. Yeah, and I, I just asked if we could the, the, tell the Board of Selectmen that it's possible that our recommendations might change based on what comes out of the public hearing, mm -hmm. just so they'll understand that. So the design guidelines, I took all the wording. Before you start, oh, sure. I just want to say this is a beautiful job. I want to thank you. Oh, sure. This is wonderfully done. Oh, sure. Yeah, so the wording essentially is all the same. I looked at the wording, and 
I thought it was really perfect for what we were what we were looking for. Yeah, I've got an issue. Yep. Uh, on page four, I think it is. Page number. All right, I'll have page page four on my laptop. I don't know what it is over here. I don't know page numbers. Throw it off the paragraph yeah. numbers. Oh uh, yeah. Um, it's the, the part about parking. You know where that comes in? Is it the is it this page with the parking areas? Well, it's it's in this part about. Yeah. Okay. It, it is on page four, under it's paragraph eleven. Um. I think this, it, the land use ordinance I think is clear about parking. And this uses the word should, mm -hmm. which suggests that we're sort of cutting back on the requirements of the land use ordinance. Right. So my recommendation would be we shouldn't say anything about parking here because I think it's going to confuse matters. I mean, I think the land use ordinance does a very good job of spelling out what we mean about parking. And by putting this in here, I think it just confuses the world. Agreed. Agreed. And there's another little one near the top of the page that talks about um, a photo shown, but it doesn't refer to which photo we're talking about. It's somewhere on the top of that same page. Uh, yeah, under B on the top of the page, it says, although much larger than its neighbors in terms of square footage, the building shown. Now, I don't know what shown you're referring to, and we yeah. should just clarify. I mean, I think it's this picture over here um, on large new buildings, or maybe it's the next page. But I do think we should, you know, put a note, C page, yeah. whatever it is, just so it'll be clear what we're talking about. Just something like if so somebody comes in, we can reference what, what, what photo exactly. we're talking about. Yeah, you can number it or put a page or, or put number. a paragraph number, something, so they'll know what we're referring to. I honestly, I didn't, I haven't read much through this. This is all language from so Vijay's booklet. No, I did is I just kind of reformatted it, try to make yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's very good. Pretty. It's, I think it's very clear, uh, and I think it works well with the land use ordinance with that one little glitch. Uh, is it a, an issue at all that, I mean, there is a lot of repetition when you compare it with the form based code. Yeah, that's is, good. It's, but it's just like a supporting document, yeah. I guess, design guidelines. Yeah, guide I lines. mean, my guess is and this is probably easier to work with. Than right. the land use. I mean, you want people to go to the land use. So they would look at this first. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I, I think this fleshes out more of what we want rather than what we're demanding. Um, yeah. I think, it clearly I think especially out. with the when you have photos like this, like these are the types of right. things that I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it makes we'll give clear. somebody a good idea of what yeah. the building should look like. Right. And and I think when we actually start doing these things, at least this is my is that the design guidelines sort of helps us define that performance standard about kind of fit in with the neighborhood. I don't remember the exact words. I mean, I think that this defines what we think the neighborhood is. And so when we're looking at proposals and projects, we can point to this and say it either does or does not fit in with the neighborhood. And, and again, we are clear that applicability is only for the village overlay district. Oh, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's yeah. Yeah. At possible. least for now, whether yeah. we want to make it something else later on, we can decide. But for now, absolutely. The planning board's favorite McDonald's and free floor. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, well, oh, I was going to yeah. kind of be the oh, was that, there? There? Mm -hmm. that really is the building. So James, building. why did you put that in there? Why not? I mean, I stop there periodically, <laughs> and I enjoy every... Everything. Is it not your favorite McDonald's? It is my favorite. Top, McDonald's. top It does three. not look like a McDonald's, and yeah. the food tastes better. Do they deliver? 
I'm not sure. To where? To Berwick? To Corner Point Brewing. <laughs> We're going to look into that. And we heard yeah. Papa John's will deliver pizza. <clears throat> Mm, so you, yeah, I don't know what you're. Right we're not going there. We're not going there. Go. Go. Let's not go there. Come on, <laughs> come on. Don't start trouble. <laughs> no, but that's. I, I, I wanted to thank you personally for that picture. <laughs> are there any, are there examples that you kind of, always think back to as picturesque examples that you want to incorporate in there? If you see anything, or no, I think I like the pictures of the. Not recommended. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I recognize oh, some of those. Yeah. yeah. You that's know what's funny is I have parking lots. Helpful. Yeah. I have a like a like a feeling when I look at those buildings. Like I literally cringe a little bit. Like, yeah. oh. did you go out and take yeah. pictures intentionally of these, especially the ones that? No, I heard? took Lee J. The, the old, Lee J's booklet had mm. good pictures in there, but they were just they weren't very they weren't good quality, and I just tried to. Um, I would Google just kind of Google image search like like little like the bullet points and see what, what would come up and sometimes it worked and, and I also we borrowed a lot from the other design guidelines like Kittery North Wyndham mm -hmm. here's just a thought um, why don't we run this by somebody who's a potential developer and see what they you know does it is it understandable to them I mean I don't think it delays what we're doing tonight but I'm, you know we're doing this on the assumption that it's going to be helpful for people developing. Let's ask one. Sure. Or two if we can, you know. Sure. But, but these are being adopted as a reference document. Right? I understand that, but we want to make sure that mm. the person who's going to be using them mm -hmm. understands them the way that we want, the, you know, that we're intending them to be understood. Yeah. You know, I just this find was, it useful. This was like land use with pictures, and I think we yeah. can amend it. Mm -hmm. No, I, um, I mean, I just find it useful to... We're going to learn a we're lot. We're looking to vote on this in November, right? No, no, we don't need to vote no. on this. I don't think, do we? We're not at the vote so. on this? I thought these were guidelines, so they yeah. didn't have to be voted on. They, they, they probably they should be voted on. Well, what are they going to be part of? So they're re they're referred to in the land use ordinance. Are they part of the, are they like an annex? Or they're an sort of, yeah, exactly. They're like a, but, an but annex, a supplement, whatever. But, the, but, but the, Nate, the, the words have all been changed from shall to should, right? Right. Guidelines. Oh, yeah, so I, I don't, I, I'm, my, my assumption that, we're, that this is not going to the town for a vote. Kind of like what the subdivision regs used to be like, living document. But you don't even have well, to. Well, no, but uh, because we always thought that the subdivision regs were law. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, different. This, this is. I just this meant in the sense that you can, you can change them. This, this is meant to be a helpful document. Right. Um, and you know, and I still think it. The, the legal status is: does it fit into the neighborhood? But the actual guidelines themselves, I, I guess that's what they are. It's just like, this is what we think. You know, this is, these are what our goals are. But if you've got another way to get there, knock yourself yeah. out. Yeah, when you look at form-based code, it becomes really difficult to cover everything. Um, but I think if you have pictures, you kind of set the stage and, you know, well, it's also, guidelines. It's also my sense that, that you know, unlike some towns, I mean, I don't think we want to be overly rigid and say, you know, you must have shutter, shutters that are a pale blue and three inches wide. You know, yeah. that, I, that doesn't seem to me to be the character of Berwick, but I could be You can be, become more specific further down the road. You know, well, if, if we choose to be. A lot of this is just that, you know, and, and, and even the, the, the ordinance change on, on odors, I got to think over the years that's going to be reworked because it's just. It's a little, you know, it's hard to spell out what we really want, but I think it's a very good beginning. But, you know, and I think the same with these guidelines. As we work with them, we'll get an idea. I've read the, um, what needs to be the odor control, and that's a tough one. It, it does pass it for, initial, for an initial try, okay. the smell test, so. I know that. Um, good good yeah. choice of words. The smell but I'll tell you, good. it's, you know, until we get, uh, like, the sound meter, we have a smell meter. And, and, and yeah. you're right, we just don't. Some of these are like that too. Like, I mean, there's probably the new is one building, but it's like multiple buildings. So that's pretty pretty straightforward. I might try to find some more pictures, maybe for lighting or whatever. But that's the gist of it. Maybe next meeting, you guys adopt it and we can ask yeah. for yeah. ask Lee J. Mm -hmm. so. okay, that's that. Um, Parking in there again. Do we need that? Or is that just
just would reference the lighting. Oh, does it come up again? Yeah, we need to be real careful what we say about. This is, well, this is, we for, this is for lighting. We predict what we have in land use. Yeah, this is re in reference to lighting, oh. parking area lighting. So it's more along the lines of just lighting, not necessarily parking. So, so with the sidewalk plan, there's a little preface about complete streets, um, communities in Maine, Portland, Scarborough, New Hampshire, Dover, Portsmouth, they've adopted some form of complete street policy. Complete streets accommodate all modes of transportation, transportation including walking, biking, public transit, and driving. And I noticed skateboards aren't listed. E-scooters. <laughs> we'll add that to be continued. The streets are designed to balance safety and convenience for all ages. And Actually, quite seriously, you know what one I wish you would add? Yep. Wheelchairs. Okay, yep, absolutely. We definitely consider that as and make sure that and keep that in accessible. mind as we're doing all these things. Absolutely. Because they are handicap accessible. You'll see there's more um, there's a little there's a page on ADA accessibility. Okay. But I agree in this section wheelchairs should always be accounted. Um, there's an economic benefit green dividend for basically um, money not spent driving can be spent in the local economy. There's obvious health benefits. Complete streets um, that are designed as complete streets from the beginning are more, they're safe. Well, if, uh, another benefit you might want to add in there is the social benefit. I mean, when you're out walking, you're more likely to run into your neighbors than if you're sitting in your car. That's, a that's great, always a good thing. That's a great point. With some exception. <laughs> There's a couple, a couple times in there reference um, the comp plan, reference the vision plan, uh, in the 1991 comp plan, require any subdivision approved with both uh, public water and sewer have sidewalks. Develop a 10 year renovation and new sidewalk schedule integrated with major sewer water and stormwater projects on town roads. Um, walkability is was one of the bigger themes throughout the vision report. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this data. 45% um, of our sidewalks are in poor condition. 31% are good. All right, 31% are okay. 14% are good. Uh, a lot of the cases, there isn't a curb or it's in poor condition. Uh, barely half of our sidewalks are ADA compliant, meaning there's one stretch in Berwick where the sidewalk never ends, so there's no way to get off. Um, sometimes there's a crack right in the middle. So the- You should change it pay to like fair or something like that. Okay, that's fair. Fair condition, you know, you know so you have good, poor, fair condition. Yeah. Instead of good, poor, and okay condition. Right. You're okay, maybe different than my okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Deal. Um, the stress is put on going to concrete. Uh, I think the concrete where feasible, it's ideal because I think we're all trying to build something for the long run. While it's more expensive, it lasts much longer. Obviously, there will be some stretches in town where it just makes sense to patch with asphalt just because the value of the sidewalks become more valuable as they're connected into a, a network. Have you considered anything for just say the perimeter and internal to the prime canning area to be brick? That's to require that to be brick. Yeah. It's possible, but the question is how how friendly is brick with like a wheelchair? And it's dual. I mean, I think it is doable. You can do brick. That's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. But I think of brick like old port brick. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that might not Maybe be. But that not, might not be the. Lettuce. I think if you have a nice. lot of old brick would be really nice. sidewalks, like you can go old port, you can go to Annapolis. They have tree roots growing right through the sidewalks and yeah. you have to, if you're in a wheelchair, you're gonna have to go over that route 
you know, so somehow or other, they're getting away with it. Well, a lot but of times those crosswalks, too, that, that's actually uh, concrete that's stamped and colored to look like brick. Yeah, yeah. Durham does stamped asphalt. Mm -hmm. They stamp the yeah. asphalt and then paint uh, Or it. concrete. You mean. No, they stamp the asphalt. Stamp the asphalt? Yep. I'd be a, that's what I'd like to see for our crosswalks. Yeah. Like in Concord, <laughs> Concord has stamped, painted mm -hmm. crosswalks that are really nice. You jealous of their crosswalks? Yeah, it's, it's super nice. John, we were John gets all the nice stuff, doesn't he? <laughs> well, he's in Kenny Buck now. Oh, he's in Kenny. Thank you, track him. But yeah, we were uh, we were at um, a wedding and we lost Lindsay and I lost the keys to her car, so we were stuck in Concord the entire day, and it was it was awesome. They had they had like don't say anything bad. I grew up there. It's a good town smoke. Yeah. Lose your keys. You'll enjoy lose, the day. Yeah. Lose, lose your keys in Berwick. Uh, the, the hotel <laughs> we were staying at just happened to be right outside of the uh, end of the five five k race. Yeah. So this is. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. Here we go. This is one of the probably the top priorities is the stretch of Sullivan, where. Um, the left, it's just uneven, no curb. In the middle, there's no, there's no, there's nothing. And then again, there's no curb. And this would get you to the town hall from the sometimes the bus stop or the, the four way stop. Yeah, that, that middle section seems like it should just be, it just seems like something the town should do. There for drainage right now. There should be sewers there. Um, the segment on the left is going to Memorial Field. It would probably make sense to widen that a little bit to at least six feet. And then picture on the right. Um, I think Lee J would tell you that you could you could pr probably try to entice Mark to do the entire stretch if you could. Um, I guess convince him or I guess you could condition him on doing the entire entire stretch I don't, I don't know but all the way up all the way up Rochester Street to Wilson. the ball field Wilson that's I that's mean Wilson I mean to the under the right as it goes to Wilson Street that's Wilson yeah that's yep. the oh, okay. entrance to the police oh. station oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's the empty oh, parking okay. lot okay yeah. I was thinking that was Rochester Street but at the, at the very least half of it will be his responsibility because that's right. right in front of the property mm -hmm. Yeah, and is there even a sidewalk on the opposite side of Wilson no. Street? Nope. No, there's nothing. Nope. There's nothing. There's nothing. And uh, there's, there's probably going to be a crosswalk there anyway. I would think. A crosswalk. Entering the oh, yeah. canning property. He'll, he'll want to make that yeah. as fluid make that really accessible and connected as possible. Yeah. I think when I was walking this with John back in the day now, it's really apparent having street trees to separate would make it really nice and really walkable. Yeah, there, there's and absolutely nothing to stop a car from running you over here. <laughs> no. Nothing. There's, uh, on the left is right in front of the town hall, and on the right is in front of Subway. Obviously not ADA compatible. Um, the question would be, do we patch that, or do we replace with concrete? I would almost suggest uh, go with concrete might as well do it and get it right because it's right there. <laughs> That's Bow Street. Um, I'm probably going to put in the tactile pads at the tip down for the, if you want to make it ADA compliant. Right. Just put those in. And then you have to make sure that the public works doesn't plow them up because that's just plowing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's, There's a lot of things that go into it. Yeah, there needs to be a lot of coordination with Public Works as we're putting more infrastructure on Is that the John's shadow? <laughs> it's, it's either mine or his. Bad, bad photography technique right there. So. I know, right, Sean? <laughs> well, we took 60, pic 60 segments, so. Um, Bow Street and, like, coming across from the bridge with things that are happening at One Sullivan, we'll want to make that safe as possible, especially if people have a few... 
beers. <laughs> so a sidewalk or a stroller is going to hit that and immediately go 90 degrees. The sidewalk never ends. Um, I think, I don't know if this has been fixed. So I don't know if the sidewalk is like this anymore. But it was bad. And That looks like a patch job that Berwick did on top of an old sidewalk. Sounds like an overlay. Yeah, an overlay. So, do the existing pedestrian use, functionality, connectivity, and future uses the following segments of sidewalks have been identified as high priority? Um, 2,725 seat of sidewalks uh, at $60 a millennial foot, and that, that price, I have an email out to Robert to see if that's reasonable. That's uh, um, 163500 Um this is that segment one was covered earlier. Segment two and three in front of Town Hall and Subway. Also, those pictures are covered earlier. Segment four, going from the bridge to Great Falls Park along uh, Sawmill up to Malton, which uh, Steve, our town manager, is um, pushing hard to make, make happen in conjunction with the outfall work. and. Mm -hmm. Um, the bridge along to Bow Street, so that's the one Sullivan consideration. And then connecting another segment from the four-way stop to 71 Sullivan Street. So that, co that connects Memorial Field to Estabrook. It connects everyone's Sullivan and Memorial Field to the downtown. Secondary priority, um, we did this again, of course. Too fast, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's an existing segment on Pine Hill Road, and it just get another 600 feet connects you up to up to Pine Hill Road. Um, anyways, let's see. Um, Logan. So I was driving today and, and saw that there was already a sidewalk from Logan to Dobson. It's just a little thin stretch. It makes sense to widen that a bit. Now the question, the question is, is there value of being able to walk to the Berwick walk-in from the downtown and, and connecting it in? Eventually. I Eventually. Know there is. But sure. If the sidewalk comes over yeah. to Spool Street, and you can see the building from there. Yeah, because well, it ends right at Old Pine Hill and the school. Yeah. I think Old Pine Hill, to me, would be an important priority, mm -hmm. yep. especially with the medical building there, the library there, and over the hill down School Street. Also, if you go developments, yep. new people yeah. living in there. There's um, connecting Bell, Goodwin, Jordan, Rochester Street. There's all that interconnectedness from Memorial Field and all that density there. They're connected to Rochester Street or through Jordan Street. But the, uh, that section right, the, uh, Jordan Street, those places, you know, the between the ball field and Rochester Street, I mean, that's a pretty dense area, but I think it's a safe walking area the way it's the traffic is patterned right now. That's kind of what I felt um, about Jordan Street. You know, Street. like, a, a lot of times, I remember people saying, and, a long time ago that they didn't want sidewalks so the kids could ride their bikes in the street. You know, they didn't want curbings. Okay. Um, and if you have a safe neighborhood, um, I mean, you can go to a lot of places and, you know, people don't want the hard curb sidewalks. They want, you know, a cul-de-sac, per perfect example. Kids play in the cul-de-sac. Good point. You could um, reach out to Some them. of those areas, I don't know, we should probably pull people in those neighborhoods and say, do you want sidewalk there or not? Sounds good. And then connecting that little loop from Sawmill Hill to Allen Street. And then there's sidewalks on Allen Street. And then from, really it would be not from Dobson to Pine Hill Road, but it'd be from 
school of Hanyo Railroad. No, wait, that's right. Never mind, sorry. So from, if you went up Dobson and then you just connected the segment from there to the pub, public library, mm -hmm. that might be the more realistic way to get from the downtown to the library. The library yeah. So mm -hmm. take Dobson? I don't want people walking down my street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're right, that is, because yeah. most people do that shortcut anyway. They don't walk all the way up yeah. School so Street and then make a left. They well, go up Dobson. They can set them down the Penny Pond Trail. That's scenic. Yeah, right. <laughs> get eaten alive. <laughs> So that put a box in front of your house for public comments. Mm -hmm. Keep an iPad out there. Uh, and then the seg the other, the next segment down is to the library, but you can see it's double the sidewalks needed. In my and then future considerations, just based off of use and mostly just the cost. So you're looking at $546,000. I don't understand why you put Berwick Road, the Hussey School, when 99%, 99.9% of the kids that go to school there come in in a yellow bus. Well, and the teachers don't all think, drive in. Don't you think there's maybe value of being able to walk from the Hussey School for a day trip to the downtown? It's a, I think it's a mile walk. I don't know if that's realistic or... You know, uh, well, it's not downtown. today. So I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to spend $200,000 for a day trip. <clears throat> yeah. Well, so... We I'll could send them to Paris but for also, $200,000 for a day trip. <laughs> but also, if you, you do Barrow Road, you're connecting to the Great Works Regional Land Trust parcel as well. Mm -hmm. And you can either do Barrow Road to Hussey, Hussey, or you can go down 236 to Hussey. Either, either way. Also, there's, there's funding grants and stuff if you're building sidewalks to schools how about to uh, post offices because people do walk to the post office uh, from downtown yeah. well, but and we i know we don't know where the post office is going to be should be well, that's, from that's, that's that's another point we you don't know where it's going to be and it sure be nice to have it downtown it would save us a lot of money on building a sidewalk from downtown to the existing ones this is my really beautiful map and the contract is up this year i think Right, I know we've been about to talk about we, We'll either hand this off to SMPDC or John Stoll Consulting to make this a more professional looking map. Um, so let me use my, the blue is already existing, good or okay sidewalks. There might be a couple of segments missing, like, but this really isn't like okay, it's, it's just there. It's. <laughs> Sidewalks. Um, any um, ideas? There's a sidewalk that that sidewalk continues past Dobson, yep. and it goes to Old Pine Hill. Yep. But you have it as green. Right. Right. Yeah, it should be it more ends right there. Right? The, the, it ends the, at Old Pine Hill. Future consideration, you mean? No, it, it continues right. past Dobson. Past right. Dobson up all the way like to Powell. This, this stretch, yeah. this stretch yeah. already exists. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, but you have it as green. Right. Yeah. Future yep. consideration. Which makes this to here pretty pretty feasible and also you have to decide what what side of the road you want it on though mm -hmm. where you want people crossing to get to, if they're going to get to the pharmacy where do you want them to cross do you want to cross at old pine hill is it safer there or is it safe to cross down by the pharmacy good question you're at an intersection at old pine hill you've already got cars slowing down stopping mm -hmm. that may be the safest place for people I think the Amua thing is we'll work on getting that flesh, fleshed out a bit where if a developer had 300 feet of frontage, 300 feet at $60 a linear foot, we'll work on that price. You exact that amount for, you know, segment one or segment, you go down the list until we have Sidewalk How about we briefly spoken about using the impact fees to help the sidewalk building program? Is that going to be something we're going to look into, or the town and the selectors going to look into? It's really 
difficult to do impact fees for infrastructure unless we we'd have to check to see if we can consider sidewalks as recreation blame that, that first that sentence water sewer. and sewer is infrastructure we're going to charge impact fees for water and sewer we charge impact fees for recreation and open space we don't have impact fees on new construction for water and sewer connections well those that's are those, 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 are, those are separate that's that's sewer and sewer charges an impact fee okay and then water has some sort of establishment the water department charges you know by default if they run in front of your house I think you they have to, to pay something the sewer district does the same with their frontage but the impact fees we collect are recreation and open space but th does it have to be that way why couldn't well, it no be, it could be it, you could I mean, to me an impact fee is because your development is impacting the cost of the town or the town's infrastructure there possibly so contributing to there it there possibly could be a scenario where we get rid of the open space component for some of it move it all to recreation and then if we, we consider sidewalks as part of recreation that's one path I see stretch. it is a stretch but what if we define sidewalks as a recreational opportunity in the master plan that they're developing we might have something it's possible but when, when across the street we did that routine about comparing the new the additional value and then just putting them in a separate fund what's that called the tiff the tiff, the tiff yes. yes can we use the tiff for any of this absolutely but only if you're in a certain area that the TIF well, has but a, been designated a lot of this for. is going to be the downtown area, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and I don't remember the exact contours. But doesn't the TIF go beyond just the overlay district? Yeah. Yeah. It pretty much o is only, the overlay district. Yeah, but okay. only uh, if I th did, like didn't we go to the Estabrook School? No, thing? no, we did not. No. In, in the TIF. No, you can go outside the boundaries according to the one. Well, you can create. We, we can create a new one. Create as, we can create another one. You can create another one. But if you can show that the state of Maine actually monitors how you're doing your, your monetary things in a TIF, if you can show that the off-site improvement right. has an right. impact on the mm -hmm. development yeah. itself, then you can do that. And Estabrook School is in the, is in the village district. Yeah. This is just the... Uh, so what's the next step with this? Thing? I think the next step is formalizing so what's the grand yes. total of all of the different priorities? Did you figure that out? It's like a million. Yes. Yeah, oh, several million, I think. No, it's a million. It's about a million. It's one million? It's yeah, a million. Wow, nice. That's, like that's assuming $60 of, of lineal fall. Also, my methods of, of calculating the length, I used a ruler at first. He scaled it. Used a ruler with, with like Google Maps, yeah. and then I used their GIS maps, which actually has a tool that you can. Yeah, you plot in. So it's give or take like 25 feet every About you and John went out there with a tape measure. Yeah. <laughs> 25 foot That's tape. the next. <laughs> you do that in millimeters or in uh, inches? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Now, the existing sidewalks, is that, is repair of those in public works budget somewhere? They have money every year for that, just like roads. Yeah. But it's not, you know, it's never been enough. To, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then also with that pricing, that would be for swapping out the pave, um, the asphalt for the concrete over by subway. Is that your figures? This th yeah, that price is just all concrete, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No asphalt. Right. So that, that's concrete. assuming that everything gets converted. But you're like you're talking about doing concrete beyond the town center. Um. Actually, I mean, no. I think. I, I that's a good that, point. I mean, that's a good point. <coughs> I think that's the only area that would price. really need concrete is the, 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 the town center. Hardware areas? You know, the, town, the, the town center areas. Yeah. Because you're going to start getting into sidewalks further out, and they're just going to start dropping salt on them. Mm -hmm. And concrete and salt do not mix at all. So if they impact asphalt? Not the way it impacts concrete. It will eat concrete. 
UNH uses a ton of salt, and we are constantly repairing concrete steps. They can't mix walls. concrete that's because uh, you can mix concrete for salt water. I thought you can put additives stuff. in concrete that will help, but yeah. over so time, concrete sidewalk is going to deteriorate faster than asphalt huh. because of salt use. That's a good point, though. Not all of it needs to be. Yeah, I think once you're beyond the, you know, the village overlay area, then you go back to asphalt. Yeah. yeah. So once you have a sidewalk sidewalk plan like this, um, and it's implemented, and we we're going to fund it a couple different ways, either through regular taxes, like I think sidewalk fix it projects now, are funded that way, and then uh, TIF for you know whatever. Um, then the selectment of the ones that will, for a given year, will, you know, when they do their budget, they're going to say, we're going to do Old Pine Hill Road now, we're going to do that road next. And but according to this plan. Isn't there a time limit on when you have to spend the impact fee money that you bring in? That's for impact fees, yeah. but the, the main reason for doing this was the in the world program. So, so there's no time limit? That's what Lee Jay said last meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It's five mm -hmm. years for the impact fee. But if we do this, we can collect money, and if the, the project is in priority 15 area, it doesn't matter that it may not get built for 15 for, or 20 or 25 years. It's okay. okay. Does it mean it, does it either say there's a development that happens, um, uh, say, they're in here. You can either, you can either, like take the money from here and put it here and there has to be a direct nexus, which means the plan is that we're gonna have a sidewalk here, you know, eventually. Or you hold the money until and then we we build up these sidewalks and then once it's appropriate, you expend those funds and we, we would build it with that money here. Mm -hmm. But I assume once we put a a plan into effect then we have the nexus covered. I think I, that part I, is, should I mean, be relevant. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. That's my. That's and that my has opinion. to go to a town vote. I'm assuming to put the plan together or not. I I would say we adopt this into our town's comprehensive plan. So yes. Good. So, so, but that doesn't solve any of the problems of of the, the schedule of when to do it, uh, yeah. who pays for it. Doesn't solve. It just says that this is what the town should have. Well, the know. who pays for it. <coughs> And that has to be adopted is by the, over time. By the this pays for it, but you're right. It, yeah. I don't know how long it's going to take to get six, uh, to get a million dollars in the in lieu program. I mean, it well, could take years and years and yeah. years for that to happen. Um, I mean, is the idea not to build it until the money is there? You build. I mean, you build it as the. I think you build it. Build it as the money as comes in. in. Yeah. You build you know, it until you have enough money to pay for segment one. You might use half the money from a developer. You might use half the money mm -hmm. from the town. Yeah, and that's going right. to be done by the selectmen yeah. on by the year basis. Whatever is 60 yeah. times 200 is. Uh, 1.2 million. What? 60 times what? 60 times 200. 60 times 200. 120 no, it's 120,000 bucks, right? No, no, 120. 60 times 200, three zeros. One billion, billion. Or 12? Peanuts. <laughs> 1.2 billion? No, 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 billion? No, 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 no. 1.2 billion. <laughs> 13,000. 13, so, <coughs> so you get $13,000 in whatever way, and it just goes to segment one. You, just, you know, that right. segment two is 200 feet, that's uh, 13,000, and then uh, build what you can. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So Thank you when would this be uh, an update to the com comprehensive plan, and when would some kind of a, um, I'm not sure how the selecting would treat well, you this, still don't how, have how the, to fund it. You still don't have the, the right amounts that you're looking for, right? Yeah, it needs to be. Is this, is this not, this not going to be ready for November? No, okay. it'll be. This is another next spring thing? Spring, yeah. Okay. okay. June. It'll be a June. So you got to talk to Robert and get some amounts. Yep. And just tight, tighten it up. Mm -hmm. Tighten up the numbers, More specific. the existing okay. sidewalks, maybe including the side of the street. Get some more pictures. Yeah, maybe figure out where the tar should go versus where the right. concrete should go. Exactly. Like there's a lot of 
decisions. That and we should talk experts. more about how how valuable it would be to do to connect the Hussey School to the downtown. Mm -hmm. If yeah, people well, would yeah. actually use it. I mean, it's like priority 15 or 16 on your list, so we, we got a while to worry about. Yeah. Right, it's the absolute last. <laughs> we got some time to talk about it. When will the proposed amendments be posted online, James? You know, or are they already up? Um, I'll Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Uh, so, anybody interested in coming to the public hearing on the sixteenth of August? The proposed amendments will be online early next week. Please review them and. Come do your civic duty and give us your comments two weeks from tonight. Absolutely. And then next Tuesday, Dave, you're going to... They will be there. Would you like to have... Would, it, would you feel better if there were other... Sure, it doesn't... Yeah, yeah if you'd like well, to come. I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or clap. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, I want to bring up something that we just barely touched, but with... Uh, the Great Falls Park, um, we have a little committee that's working on the Great Falls Park, which is at the corner of uh, Sawmill Hill and Moulton Street, um, overlooking the river and the, and the dam and uh, all that stuff. Um, and there's been some MS4 stormwater work being done um, along Moulton Street, and it's apparently it's, that's moving along pretty well. And on... Um, I believe it's the 15th of this month. There is, uh, it's going to be on Facebook and on the town's website. Uh, Great Falls Park will have an open house it at the is. House of Hope. Yeah, it's already there, yeah. Yep. And, uh, and I, you know, it's, it'd be nice if we got a nice turnout to, to see what's going to happen there. And I think that'll be a, a fantastic addition you know, to the mm -hmm. town's recreation. It's August 18th. August 18th? You're close. I have something I else on the 15th. The I'm getting old, James, and I, I get confused. <laughs> um, but I knew it was coming up in uh, two weeks. So anyway, so people should watch out for that and if they're around town that day. Again. All right, anybody else? Next on the agenda, the adjournment. Ain't for me. I think it's Mike's turn. I move to adjourn the... Um, Thursday, August 2nd, 2018, uh, Planning Board meeting. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Thank you. Well done. <laughs>